Welcome to the last segment of Citizens Forum being filmed on Tuesday, August the 4th in the Memorial Arena in Victoria, B.C. Our guest in this segment is Will Smith. Will's been on the show a number of times and we always talk about consciousness. So, Will, let's do it again. Take it away. Well, thank you for inviting me back on the show. And I wanted to uh, back off a little bit and, and just because I've been on the show and a lot of people ask me, you know, I really don't understand about consciousness yet. So I wanted to just me too. back off and, and talk about that. So rather than try to really define it, though, I just want to talk about a couple of things. Like one of the things that's really easy to see is a change in consciousness. So this week we had the, uh, the news about Cecil the lion, which, you know, just took over in some places. People were very upset about Cecil the lion. And uh, I, I, so that jogged something in my memory back from uh, the early part of the 20th century when Teddy Roosevelt was president and I knew he was a big game hunter. So I looked him up in Wikipedia and read some articles about what he actually did. And he and his son, after he was president, went over and bagged like, I don't know, 500 animals in Africa in like 1909. And uh, it was pointed out in the article that, uh, you know, this wasn't really that big a deal because some hunters were doing a thousand a year of big game. And so back at that time, people could go kill a thousand lions a year and wouldn't really raise an eyebrow. So. In a hundred years, if you look at where we've come now, one lion getting killed in Africa can get the whole world uh, talking about it. So that's a huge change, change in, in consciousness. consciousness. Yeah, 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 that's right. So, uh, yeah, and then the other thing that I wanted to uh, talk about, bring up about, about just, you know, the general conversation is uh, I found on YouTube that uh, Joseph Campbell talked with Bill Moyers back in the late 80s about myth and there's a whole series of six interviews that are an hour long each that, that were done in 1986, 1987 and they're available on YouTube. You can watch them for free and uh, they're called, it's called The Power of Myth and he talks a lot about that and you and I talked just a, a little bit about that and I think that that's, that's a really, this guy really has some great insights for us that we need to listen to nowadays and the, the first thing that uh, he brings out one of the first things that he brings out is that the old way if you look at humanity as a you know a continuous history and you just you, and you try to give some value to all of our understanding of what's going on on this planet that uh, putting our consciousness here in our head is a relatively new idea a new concept for for the most ancients cognition was it was uh, just a function of consciousness. It wasn't, it wasn't the end all and be, it wasn't where consciousness was located. Now we have, now our science says, I think, therefore I am, which sort of implies if you're not thinking, you aren't, which is not the way people used to think. They used to think that your consciousness was either in your body or maybe in your heart, the Egyptians, sorry, the Egyptians um, thought it was in your heart and that the brain was just like a sense organ more than anything else. And that it was subjugated to the heart. Uh, and I think we can see that in our culture, that we have gotten to that point where there's little heart in our consciousness. Mostly, it's just mostly thinking. But, uh, and so, you know, we make decisions as if uh, somebody who's the leader of a country has to make the tough decisions. And they have to say, well, these people over here are bad, kill them. And, uh, you know, I mean, so, so that's what they do. They just sort of steal themselves and, and kill them. And uh, one of the things that uh, Joseph Campbell brings out, I think it's Schopenhauer, I'm not really uh, a philosophy uh, major or anything, but Schopenhauer pointed out that people have this instantaneous split second decision. If some other person is in danger and they can save their lives, sometimes they put themselves in great danger. And, and his idea was that at this point, there's this split, section, split second realization that I am you and you are me. And so the person puts themselves in great danger to save someone else. And that's a, that's a pretty interesting concept because that's not how we think from an evolutionary standpoint. What, what does it, what, 
impact does it have when our consciousness moves from our body into our brain or mind? Because I know in my own life, I, I, I always think I spend too much time with my brain racing around. Exactly. You know, going nowhere, thinking just whatever, whatever it wants to think. But I'd rather be more in my body having, and maybe some people are, I don't know where other people are, but I, you know, I know where I am. Well, that's the idea behind meditation is that you learn to quiet your mind uh, voluntarily so that you can consciously lower your, your hamster wheel <laughs> Stop it from turning so fast. And I can't even imagine what it feels like to have your consciousness well, you in your body. You can go take a ride in the flotation tank and, and find that out. But um, anyway, I think, I think that you're bringing out what, one of the things is that it's just in the, in the, uh, the milieu, the, the, where we are right now in our society, it's hard for us to imagine that. So I want to I make a kind of a just put out a concept and I'm not asking anybody to to try to change I'm not I don't want to change anybody's mind I just want to sort of give a different viewpoint uh, you know sometimes by putting on a an example of this if you've ever gone skiing and you and you're in a time when that there's no uh, when there are no the sun has gone behind a cloud you can't see where the moguls are where the humps are until you put on yellow goggles and then you can just see everything really clearly. So what I'm, a, I'm going to, to suggest is that we can give a, uh, we can ha put a filter on sometimes to, to take a look at what's going on. Because, see, the world has to make sense to me. So I want to back off. I want to go up to a high altitude because I don't think we can decide what we can do until we know where we are and where we're going. So I want to call where we're going reality 2.0. And I'm not saying that I know where it is, but I'm saying that maybe we can get an idea of it. So when I say reality 2.0, that really just indicates that we're going through a shift in consciousness right now. And Joseph Campbell points out that we don't, our myths are fading away. People in a normal, in a normal society, everybody knows the common myths, but now they're sort of fading away. And these serve as a kind of a library that let us talk about things that are not in the material world. They're in the, in the non-material world, but they let us bring these things into our, into our consciousness. And the other thing I'd like to point out is that we're so used to dealing with consensus reality, which is the average of what's going on. It's not the specific thing. But if you think about, again, on the last show I talked about the waterfall, using the waterfall to, um, as an image for where we are. And our, in our normal life, if you look at where we've been over the past uh, thousand years, most of the time we're just sort of going along, floating down the river. And then at some point we go over a waterfall. And then at some point when things are really going crazy, we're down in the, in the pool, down at the bottom, and we're all getting jerked around and bashed around. But if you look at that, that's really just an illusion. That's really not what's so in that picture. What's really so is each little drop of water is having a different experience, just like us. So we can look at Canada. We can say, look what's going on in Victoria. We can, take a, we can look in the newspaper and say, look what's going on in Victoria. But that's not the real story. Just as in that waterfall, there's one drop that went over the waterfall and it went straight down to the bottom and it's hugging the bottom and it just came out and it went down the stream. And it says, what? What's everybody talking about? I, I didn't notice anything that was that crazy. I'm just, I'm fine. But there's some other guy, other drop who went over and he got kicked up in the air and smashed on a rock and swallowed by a fish. Well, his story coming out of what happened, what just happened is going to be a whole lot different. So, so this is what we're talking about. This is another facet of reality 2.0 is that we're going, to, we're going to be able to focus more, not so much on what everybody sees, but on we, each, what each individual person sees. So I just, I just want to just get those things kind of how, what, how, does the, how do these things uh, sit Well, you them? mentioned a few days ago that the thing of Joseph Campbell, yeah. and he said um, the old myths are, are gone, and I didn't understand what that meant until you explained it to me. But can, you gave an example of a myth and how important the myth was to the way we see the world. Can you... Well, let's just... An example of that would be... Um, let's just take Bible stories, because we live in a, 
of Judeo-Christian society. And so maybe, uh, maybe 50 years ago, not everybody was really into, into those religions, but they still knew the stories. They still knew the Bible stories. If you read something like, uh, I don't know, you read books that were uh, popular back then, you'll see a lot of references to Bible stories. And you'll just see fewer and fewer references to those stories now. I mean, you still, the big stories like Adam and Eve or the flood, but, but they're, you know, they're not, they're just not talked about. We, we don't have the, the stories that we used to have. So, but in my, in my daily life, when you have to make a decision, maybe a moral decision, it's, it's those stories we know or, or we think we know that allow us to make a decision. And if we don't know the story, the myth, we don't know what to do. Well, the Campbell's main point is that they inform us about things that are higher than just the material realm. So if you just look at the world around us in an evolutionary perspective, it makes absolute sense. This guy needs to be killed because there are just too many of these people like this, so kill him. So there are always going to be some people who are willing to do that because that's okay with them. And those guys right now in our system are going to float to the top. Now, that's, that's not the way we can create a new system, though, because we don't know what's coming. We know that those guys aren't going to be there forever, however. So that's all I want to do. I, want to, I just want to back off. I think it's very important to act at a local level to do things positively, but I just you know, looking at the, at, these, at the very top level of what's going on in the world, we don't have much to do. There's not, there are not many choices left. And we're going to have to end it like at that point until the next time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Will. And thanks for watching today's Citizens Forum.